I would like to be able to walk on a tee in a fairway confidently, not thinking where's the ball going to go, where can I miss it. It's quite a different range in the dispersion between that and the seven. You've got 100 yards there, haven't you? Between the, yeah. between the pull, pull draw and the push cut, really. Pull cut and reliably find a fairway. But it's more about off the tee. I think so, yeah. Yes. It's a great shot. Uh, <laughs> how did that one feel? I'm waiting for it to hit. That's it. Such a different timing, isn't it? So different, yeah. What's your playoff, Luke? So I play off seven now. Yeah. Uh, the handicap changed a little bit. Uh, I've managed to get down as low as this five. Right. But just hit that wall, I guess. Oh, yeah. How's your game then? You say you hit a plateau. So, what would you like to get from today? What's the? I would like. I would like to be able to walk on a tee in a fairway confidently. Right. Not thinking, where's the ball going to go? Where can I miss it? Walk up and reliably find a fairway. I think that um, that's really going to make it into my game if I can do that. So it's more about off the tee. I think so. Yeah. Do you want to hit a few just to loosen up and? That's a little, so that's a little push cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's it like when you play a draw? So I would say I'm confident down to low irons and driver. So driver is one thing I'd like to go through today because yeah. I, I can pretty much do it with seven. Right? Yeah. Um, I'd like to think in terms of being on the course as well. Nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. So. It's definitely the longer clubs where I haven't got that control for some reason. Okay. Even though I kind of know and have the feel for it. I, I, sometimes I can try that with a driver and it will go high right or flop right or cut right hard. And it's the same, it feels like it's the same swing yeah. that you just played there with yeah. seven iron that plays, plays a little draw. Yeah. And then it creates a bit of chaos with the driver. Yeah, yeah. That's probably a standard shot, that five to ten yard cut. Yeah. Um, which, is all right, which is alright with the 7 iron. Yeah. But you do the same thing with the 4 or yeah. 5, and it's, mm. it's not the same. As the, so it's manageable with these irons because they're off. Yeah. Let's see the magic with the drive there. Because that's it's a lovely strike, nice fly. Now I can move this plate wherever we need to so you feel comfortable. If you want to address the ball though, and then tell that's me. That's fine. You, yeah, is that alright? Is, is that high toe okay for the T peg? Is that alright? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. I just play like a go-to shot then. Whatever yeah, so. you, yeah, whatever you normally do, just have a couple, have a couple of shots first before I catch a day to see if you can just get comfortable. Miss that. Good one to miss. There you go. Left. Oh yeah, I see. It's quite a different range in the dispersion between that and the seven. You've got hundred yards there, haven't you? Yeah. Between the... Yeah. Between the pull, pull draw and the push cut, really. Go into the nuts and bolts of your movement and how you use the forces, because you've probably, I'm sure you've seen the videos mm. how we talk about horizontal rotation yeah. vehicle. Now I can shift my body weight, okay, and drive my body weight, that's going to give me some force, or I can push with the ground, and that pushes my body weight to get, to get more horizontal force, mm -hmm. to get pressure moving, okay? If I just use my body, pressure moves, but it's a lot slower. Okay, because I'm using my centre of mass to move it as opposed to the pressure from the ground and it shifts. When you swing with your iron, it goes back and then it's, look how early, your hands are still going up and the pressure's moving back. Look how far that pressure is to the left and your hands are still up here and the pressure's there and then the pressure keeps moving and it's, look how far you are into your left side with this pressure and your club's still back here. Okay, so your pressure's in your left, and your foot, what's happened is you've moved onto the outside of the foot with the pressure, that's great, your foot inverts, allows you to rotate, we'll talk about it in a bit. And you're in a place here now, anatomically, where you can go up, you can create more torque, but at the minute, that's okay, you get away with that, okay, it's good. With 
the driver, pressure doesn't get as far to the right, can you see? Mm. And you're using the driver. So your pressure's not moving as much, yet you've got the driver. So if your pressure's not moving as much from the ground, we're only measuring ground force here, ground reaction force, um, and vertical force really. If you're not using that ground, where are you getting the forces from? Well, you've got to be going to the upper body for it, okay? So you start to create bigger ranges, bigger movements with your upper body, or, yeah. or you're going to try and go, to go there, so there's more muscular, there's more tensioning to try and create more power. Pressure's still going now to the target, But look, notice where, as you're striking down, this pressure, okay, if you watch here, it's kind of moving at the same time, it's kind of moving very, well, it's, it's, it's kind of too late. That should already be over here, and then it has to start to move back a bit. Now, the reason it moves back is because you can't get rotation from the ground, so, See that white line? It's not really rotated much. That's the rotational force. We need to free up the lower body to stabilise the upper body. Because if something's move, if something's not moving enough, something else further up the chain is going to move more yeah. to accommodate it. Now, when you start your swing, you're heavily on your toes, and you spend most of your golf swing on the balls of your feet and the toes. That's the balls of the feet there. You're rotating and swinging the club this way, but your pressure is going forward onto your toes and we've got to change direction and at some point we are going to be using the balls of the feet but if we're already there on the balls of the feet there's nowhere else for the pressure to go I, how do I create movement if I can't move pressure now mm -hmm. from the ground I've got to create movement from the upper body and this thing's travelling now it's accelerating I, I can't use it much horizontal because I can't really move I'm on the balls of my feet and as I move on the balls of the feet I'm going to start moving to extension because as you go that way you'll start to extend you can't rotate the hips we can't really shift too much Okay, we've already shifted to be fair, or, but using this, using the upper body. And what's going to happen, you're going to have to go up. But the problem is, you're on your toes and you're going up. So as you go up, okay, it throws your hand path. And so now your hand traje the, the trajectory the hands are travelling on moves, and your shaft, your golf club, is just getting steeper and steeper and steeper. As I keep going up and up and up and up and up, look at that. It's going further and further around. Which explains the bad shot. That's what you're fighting. Yeah. So as your hands get further and further up, your shaft's doing this. Now the club head is rotating, okay? But now you've really got to use this rotation. This is right at the end of the chain to just time it, okay? If you overcook it, you've got a pull hook. And if you undercook it, it's a block cut. I'm using all this for the torque to get to the club, rotating in this light. But your shaft's steaming at the same time. And because You've got, you, so you're trying to, there's so much noise in the system, there's conflict, you're trying to control the face, but you need this end of the chain for the power too, and your shaft's steepening, so you're, you're fighting a face plane that's starting to open up and you've got to try and control it. None of these, none of these issues, or not as many, with the iron, much slower, and you're using your forces better, okay? Does that all make sense? Yes, yeah it does, especially from what I've seen in previous videos. We're going to throw you into places where your body's probably, you don't recognise. Mm -hmm because otherwise you'd probably be going there already. Yeah. All I want you to do, Luke, is just hand on those discs. And I just want you to use the disc to twist your hips. Okay, we need to just isolate the system a little bit, all these segments, these are all components, and then reintroduce them together as an integrated system, so they all become complicit with each other to create this sequence. Now, it's to let your weight shift from side to side as you do it. So now you're pushing off one disc to the other. There we go. So now, do the same thing, but look at the screen. Go from side to side now, from leg to leg, and just rotate. Okay, now look at the white line. It's rotating. Now you could make that a lot more aggressive. So you can really bang the board as you rotate and you've got that rotation, and see the orange line in there, that's the pressure through the foot, it's moving through the foot. And that, yeah. you're moving from heel to toe, and that's rotating the body from the ground. So you're starting to move the pelvis from the hips and the ankles. When you swing back like that, arm bend. That's it. Keep your grip pressure tight. Now use that rotation to get the speed.
Good. Now notice how early the body's gone and the club comes. There's a big, look at that, a big lag. Yeah. So there's a snap of the club, that impact snap. Yeah. But that's so much later, that's the end of the chain. You've already, you're long gone. How do you feel? Yeah, I, feel, I can feel it. I feel more twisting from, from the ground up. Brilliant. And that twisting, that is starting everything. Okay, that's your back, that starts everything. The club, the club, the club, the arms, everything that's reacting to those forces. So when you swing back, you make those, you create those first. So if you have another go for them, you generate those first to swing it back. Yeah. Beautiful. It's different now. Yeah. Doing that. Same speed. Our, uh, we're not bothered about the ball. I want your mind to be just on that sequence and the movement that you're just experiencing there. Because what you felt then, the purpose of these exercises is to go back to the ground, and then when you interact with the ground, suddenly, oh, I can feel my movement because I'm now moving against the ground. Mm. So it's like I can, you can feel how you're interacting with the ground. And it should feel scrambled. Yeah, well done. Cool. So, we've kind of got a feeling of, of the movement with the discs, yeah, and we're going to start to introduce more flexion and extension to help transfer these forces and also accelerate them. Extension first, so more neutral, should I say. Then you're going to flex. Okay, and then you're going to extend to twist the disc. Okay, but when you when you extend, I don't want you to go this. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go past this start position. Down. Good. And the extension will give you the twist. So you go here, and the extension just twists you back. Can you feel that? Yeah. So you go. That's it. Now to twist and start in a normal upright position. So extension. Now flex and then go up. That's your twist. And you can make this as intensive as you like. It can be like, so you're there and you can go bang. So you start upright, yeah, start twist, twisting in an upright position first, just twist, and then go flex, and then bang. There we go. Feel the direction of the club head. Feel the path it makes and direct the path over here. So now you're letting the arms swing past the body. Can you feel that? The yeah. snap's really late, and <coughs> twist your feet more, make a big twist back now, and then use your vertical to snap it, that's it. And that's your draw. Notice the space, this, this hand pass, and the club's travelling through, it's very different. You're, yeah, notice there's a shallowing going on now, it drops behind you, can you feel that? Yeah. Because it's got time. That, that movement of shallowing has created that space. But the shallowing, which is golfing terminology really, but it's kind of, it's, it makes sense to you, but the shallowing is a function of everything. You don't work on shallowing. It's a bad, it's a function of sequence, good sequence, good movement, good body awareness, good transfer of forces. It's not, oh, I'm just going to shallow my club. Because yeah. by doing that, what am I doing? Well, I'm probably just using my existing body map, using these big segments that are probably multiple segments to do it, and I'm just clunking myself into a place and expecting my body to just suddenly piece it all together. That right hand must have been even more on top. That's where it was, yeah, that's where it was when you were doing the one on the swing. And that might happen at first, where it shoots off right. It's beautiful. Feel quite different? Yeah, but not uncomfortable, but we're unnatural. Oh. Brilliant, yeah, so I mean, you've, got, you've got great movement. You just needed to be able to isolate some stuff. Really use the intensity of that movement with the feet to create the force. Let your arms just swish. That's it, up and down. Cool. And then use your vertical as well now, so you can go down and up with it. So you swish it back and then go up. Yeah. And you'll go up again. So on the way back, so swish, so you go up on the way back, and then you're going to go flexing up. Yeah. See where it throws your hands? Yeah, out. Yeah. It feels out. That's just relative to where you were before. It's not really yeah. out. It's just 
less out. But it explains the bad shot from before as well. Yeah, and it explains why you can't really get a fly if you want with your driver. Nice. A little bit different? Yeah, it feels loose, but it's still, still feeling controlled as well. Yeah. It feels delayed, that's what it feels like. Right. But not in a not reverse in, way. Yeah. Not in a manipulated way. Yeah. That's nice. That's different. So the whole thing just creates it more fluid. lag, 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 lag all the way through it. Yeah. But you're doing that through sequencing, not through training. Yeah. Fluid. Nice. Timing's good. That's what I would have said, fluid. When you were when you were starting the um, the sequence with your legs, it, it looked like it got even more fluid, and it helped your timing. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna bring your hands together now, eyes closed. The arms are just hanging underneath your chest. And there's no, you're not holding them there. You're just letting them just. You're just bringing your hands together, essentially. That's it. But just take your grip there where they are there. Cool. Now step forward and make that same plate. Does that feel different? A bit more up and over. I'll say it feels comfortable. Yeah, don't move, keep your arms there. There. Notice the toe of the tubs yeah. a little bit. Yeah. That's how it should be. Find that posture. And the arms are hanging under the chest, toes up and all that's it. Now use that sequence to swing that hand path into the draw place behind you. Well done. And you can have the conviction now to let the hand path go. Okay. Right, now with the drive. Now we're going to need to focus on just this right foot. Okay? Because it's this right leg that we want to let extend and rotate. So the pressure needs to go back. But it's also the timing of when the pressure comes back through and how do we apply that pressure. So when you were rotating your hips earlier, You'll have noticed on the pressure plate that that orange trace through the foot was not a line, but almost a line. Yeah, yeah. it kind of moves in. It actually snakes through the foot. Yeah, but it kind of goes from heel to toe, and that rotated your body. So you went like. So if you look on that pressure bar on, on that plate there. Don't really line. Yeah, the orange line through the right foot. Front to back. And can you see when it goes that way through the foot now? So it's, it's kind of heel rolls into the heel yeah. and then it will snake through the foot and off the toe yeah. and that's twisting that white line back yeah that's mm -hmm. why my right foot's doing that my left foot does the opposite so now what I've got is I've got this couple through the pelvis but it's torque okay now my pressure to rotate me this way isn't going this way the yellow line does go that way, but that's more, that's just from the right foot. Can you see what my right foot's doing? It's still going to the ball of the foot, but I'm letting my pelvis go, yeah. yeah. And that creates that trace to the left that will rock the board, okay? That's essentially what this is gonna do for you. But you're gonna now grip it with your left hand, and you're gonna feel this, throw the club off you, throw the arm off the chest. So if you, just go in into a collapse and it's, it's just really sheer force then you're not going to get the same power you're going to have to go up the body to, to, to get the power just for this exercise we're going to shift the hand path more towards nathan okay so where does it go in the back swing yeah that's it so it's going to be if you were throwing that club through here yeah Notice where but you're going to push off the board, so you're going to you're going to unweight off that board, so you're going to unload off it when you push off the balls of the foot and you comes off it. Yeah, you go to the left side. Yeah, now there's a shift there. Feel that shift? Yeah. Now you can make you can shift you can shift the direction towards this. Your body. Yeah, but you're rotating as you do it because you're banging board. Swaying, just that's it. So you don't have to shift to move. 
you can just literally flex I next step. Uh, now's the first time I know what, I've got the sensation coming from the ground up. Perfect. Yeah. Like I'm using the ground to push against it. Brilliant. Drop your hands really low, 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 so that we're going to get our posture. That's what you told me earlier. Cool. And now you can, now if you're in a lower position, you can go up as you, in your backswing. You can throw a little round you. Yeah. And then from here, you can go back into your, you leave the club behind you now, it reacts to your sequence. Load, that's what it does. Yeah. Time in the swing to go into flexion and extension, the phase you were missing. Now hold it there, now bang the board back first. Yeah, it needs to bang. Yes, brilliant, well done. Let's go for it with the ball. So just does that, that move. The same thing. thing, yeah. You're feeling that draw hand path. From that body movement in the sequence. There we go. It's a great shot. <laughs> How did that one feel? It, it didn't feel it, it didn't feel of a uh, my only thought was hamper. Yeah. That yeah. Wasn't, wasn't any of the real thought. Everything else. You'll you, uh, you'll create your own cues and everything, all the awareness creates the sequencing around that. Bigger range this time, so you have to go more into those ranges to give you that draw hand path. Beautiful. We've actually got a ball there starting right, holding its fly, which is brilliant, because now you've got a release pattern to the right. Beautiful. Different feel? Yeah. But the result was pretty happy. <laughs> Again, that felt more effortless than I expected it to. Let's go there for more talk. Yeah, that's good. Feel? Yeah, definitely lower body engaged where the start it certainly wasn't. See what the ball fight's doing. Yeah. So when you start to tap into that sequence, release pattern starts to become more recognisable. It's becoming, it's like, if I've got a conch on a piece of string, or it doesn't even have to be, if I've just got the, if I just use, if I just use the weight of the club, that becomes very repetitive action. Okay, it's not gonna do the same thing every time, it's not, but it's very close. The variability is really reduced, because I'm using its efficiency. If I try and create that circle myself, using my whole body, it's going to, the variability is going to be massive. I'm not going to be able to re reproduce it. And whereas before, I think my focus was, hands and path, like you said, so late on. Whereas now, focus coming from the ground, I forgot about This reacts, the end of that's the way it reacts. Yeah. Your body's using, your body's reacting to the inertia, the, the load of this on you. It feels it, it knows it, where it is, okay? So it reacts. What you've got to do is just input useful forces. It's a big shift to play a draw with a driver. Sequence-wise as well, the club's got to be, you have to aim miles right, it's more about you can aim right, but all your aim's doing is allowing you to then just fire your sequence in that direction. So posture, grip, moving around, finding that, it's the angle, it's the hand path. The body makes. The draw. Fly. Yeah. Was powerful. And the draw. Yeah. In amazing to see. Into a wind. Yeah, yeah, it is that wind's got one. Yeah, it's beautiful. That is gorgeous. It's a different story, isn't it? It's a bit further as well. Big that it is. From different flight than you used to see it. Yeah, it's much more powerful. Because the fade it never was, but that's up forward all the way. Really. That's a, in, just right right centre start, draw it back into, start it right to centre, yeah. then you've got three quarters of the fairway to draw it back into. And if you mm -hmm. do back into, happen to hang it out right a little bit, that ain't very, that's not, that's not block cutting. No. So you're like, edge of the fairway, semi rough, yeah. worse. Yeah. So you're going, you're, you're up in your greens, you're up in your fairways in regular. Your game plan will change. Now you see it on the tape. Yeah, that's nice. That's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's less 
Zeppelin as well. It feels it. It feels like it. Looks it. It's hard. Yeah, it does look it. Yeah, it looks very powerful. Yeah. It's dynamic. Feel what it's like to use this force to go up. And then, then you swing the club, feel the release. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But to get the down path, you're going to need to use your, your rotational force through the, through the feet and using the hips. So you need to rotate the hips to get, yeah, to open up that space behind you. Because you need to be exploring this the swing direction over here. So notice where you need to go on the way back with your hip, so the body, yeah, now notice where the body takes it. Feel the difference? It's that leap of faith, leaving the club behind you and you're just sensing it behind, waiting for it to hit. That's it. Such a different timing, isn't it? So different, yeah. This is now, you've gone, and that's the leap of faith. It's like you're just entrusting that your body and your sequence will create the release pattern for the draw, but it will do. I no longer have a thought of the club or anything arm right here. It's just that movement of from the ground to your hips, really. Just feelings. Mm, exactly, and they're, they're unique to you. Posture, shaft angles, you're, into, you're, you're adapting to the golf club with your movement, and the sequence adapts to the shot. Awesome, I'm going to finish on that one. Good one to finish on. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well done, Luke. That's brilliant. brilliant. That was wicked, that mate. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Yeah, that was brilliant. Brilliant. Cheers, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. No, no, brilliant. It was uh, great to finally get it. I imagine you're a busy man now. No, ready. <laughs>